men and inferior to men. And because of this social conditioning, it has allowed us to find ourselves in situations that we really don't want to be in, that we don't know how to get out of. And today I'm here to change that. My name is Andy Plessy and I'm the co-owner of Fight Like a Girl, which is a self-defense academy based in Durban. For anyone who wants to know, we do um, private bookings, we do corporate seminars and before Corona and after Corona, we do workshops at schools and we empower women and children across the whole of South Africa and it's something we are so passionate about doing. So why fight like a girl? I mean, fight like a girl is seen to be, you know, a negative kind of term. When we first started out, people would tease us about fighting like girls. You know, do you do scratching? Do you do handbag slapping? Do you pull each other's hair? That's what people often think of when they think of fight like a girl. <laughs> that, is, that is far, far, far from the truth, okay? Fight Like a Girl came about because it's quite simple. We are girls. We are women. It is simply not possible for us to be able to fight like men. Okay? Physically, we are different. We think differently. We don't have the same strength as a man. We don't have the same reach because we're not as tall. Our arms and legs are not as long. We don't have the speed that men have and possibly the agility that men have. Okay? So, because of that, we need to fight differently. So what do we have to our advantage? Well, firstly, we have endurance. We can outlast men and we have our minds. Women have the ability to be able to think before they act and that puts us women at such an advantage. Before I jump into the training, I just want to give you a little bit of our backstory. So I'm one co-founder and then there's Christine, who's the other co-founder, who sadly she couldn't make it today. I am a first-hand black belt in the style of Gojiru Karate. I have one gold at All Africa Gojiru Champs. I'm a mom. I have two amazing children. My daughter is 18 and my son is 11. And in fact, my daughter helps out at some of our seminars. She's one of our junior instructors. I'm going to drop in here. I have a marketing agency and I'm a marketing coach for business owners. I am nuts about mountain biking. And I love walking in nature and taking my dogs on walks and all of that good stuff. Now, Christine, Christine is a third damn black belt. She's actually one of my senseis and the reason why I started karate in the first place. She's also an all Africa Gojiru champ. She's a world Gojiru champ for fighting. She's an asthma sufferer. She's a mom of two grown boys, two grown men who are in their twenties now. And she only started karate in her forties. Now, I'm giving you this bad story because I want you to understand that we are normal, everyday women, okay? There's nothing special about us. We don't um, train in, you know, self-defense techniques and tactics in that on a regular basis. We are normal women. We are normal moms, business women, you know, just like you are. And the whole reason why Fight Like a Girl came about was because we realized through talking to, to other women and even our own experiences that not everyone wants to go and do martial arts training to learn how to defend themselves. And even just learning a martial art is not good enough when it comes to self-defense. Martial arts is not self-defense. But rather what women need to know and busy women in particular, moms who Moms who are working, I mean, you've got so much on the go. You don't have time to go and attend regular self-defense classes. We've also been on many self-defense courses ourselves. And those self-defense courses are amazing because you learn all these great techniques. But the problem with those is that they are actually really, really complicated. And if you are not practicing those techniques on a regular basis, then you are going to forget about them. When it comes time to actually needing to use those techniques, you're not going to remember. So going on once-off 
self-defense classes and courses where the moves are complicated is actually quite dangerous because you do the classes, you feel amazing while you're in there, and you feel empowered, and you walk out of there thinking like you're invincible and you can take on the world, and it gives you this false sense of security because you think that you're going to be able to defend yourself if you get into a situation. And you just carry on about life as normal, ready to defend yourself if you ever need to. And if you actually ever need to, you're not going to be able to use the techniques because you haven't been practicing them, they're not in your muscle memory, and ultimately you could end up getting yourself killed. Okay, so that is where we come in. Bike Like a Girl is very different in that we focus a lot on prevention. So how do you not get yourself into a situation in the first place? But we also understand that mistakes happen. You know, we're, we're human, we make mistakes, we, we find ourselves in situations that we shouldn't be in, we don't want to be in, and you need a way to be able to get out of those situations. So we cover that as well. The techniques that we teach are simple. They are big movements, they are easy movements. We teach you where you need to strike and how you can strike for the most maximum impact and effectiveness, okay? In a fight situation, you don't have a lot of time. So you need to get in there, you need to get in there hard and fast and you need to get out. Okay, enough about the backstory. I'm gonna jump into some training now and starting off, I wanna to talk to you about the three choices that you have. In any situation, you will always have three choices. Your first and your best choice in any situation is to leave. So to give you some examples of, of this kind of situation, it could be you are going out on a jog and you're going down a bit of a deserted road and ahead of you, you see a group of men and you start to feel uncomfortable. You need to listen to that feeling and instead of continuing to go and put yourself in a situation where you are approaching the men and coming closer to them, turn around and go back the other way. Leave. Cross over the road, go down another road. Leave. Don't put yourself in the situation. Another example could be you are at a friend's house and there's a few people over and a man starts to, you know, make advances towards you and um, you're starting to get uncomfortable. Leave. Don't stay there. Leave. Okay? You get into an argument with someone. Instead of escalating the argument, leave. Okay? Your first and best choice is always to leave a situation. Your second choice that you have is to submit. In a submit situation, this is when you are choosing your life. So you would submit in the case of a home invasion where there are multiple attackers. In that case, chances are they don't want to hurt you, but they want to take your stuff. So in that case, you're going to do what you're told, you know, lie down on the floor, tell them where they can get stuff, and you're going to submit, and you're going to do as you're told. The third choice that you have is to fight. This would most likely be on a one-on-one -on -one situation when you are not able to leave, okay, they're blocking the exit, you've been cornered, you're trapped somehow, you're in a room, you can't get out. So your life is now in danger, your dignity is now in danger, and you are now fighting to preserve your life. So in that situation, you have to make the decision to fight because you are worth it, you have to commit to it, you have to follow through. So you need to fight hard and fight fast. And you need to go for the most vulnerable areas on your attacker. Okay, you, you can't mess around with trying to poke people in the eyes and punch them in the stomach because that's not going to work. You need to go for the most vulnerable areas so that you can get them done and get out. The next thing is 
a little definition on what self-defense is, okay? Self-defense is the ability to remove yourself from a situation. So self-defense means that you are going to retaliate or attack someone to stun them and give yourself the chance to leave, okay? Self-defense does not mean put them on the ground and continue to keep kicking them until they're unconscious. If you had to do something like that and seriously injure your attacker or even kill your attacker, then chances are you're going to go to jail. As we all know, gender-based violence in South Africa is, is horrific. It's really, really bad at the moment. So we need to take steps to, to protect ourselves and to protect our children. They estimate that one in three women is going to be sexually assaulted in her lifetime. It is reported in South Africa that every 13 minutes a person is raped. They estimate that one out of nine cases of rape are not reported. That means every two minutes someone is being raped in South Africa. It's also reported that every three minutes someone is suffering grievous bodily harm. That means someone is being assaulted really, really badly. You need to empower yourself. You need to empower your children. So what can you do? Firstly, you need to understand what it is that an attacker looks for in a victim. Once you understand that, you can then take action to prevent yourself from being an easy target, okay? So what is it that an attacker looks for in a victim? Well, if you think about animals in the wild, imagine a, a lion hunting a pack of deer. It's not going to go for the strongest of the herd, is it? No, it's going to look for the weakest, the slowest, the oldest, the sick. It's going to look for what it believes is the easiest target. It's going to look for the animal that is not going to fight back. And that is exactly how the human attacker works as well. The human predator doesn't want someone who's going to fight back. They want to go for someone who looks like they're going to be an easy target. Someone who looks weak. Someone who looks like they won't fight back who looks like they have low self-esteem. They want an easy conquest and there is never a random attack. The victim is always selected. You would have been watched and you would have been chosen because the attacker thinks that you are an easy target. So you could be watched for 30 seconds or you could be watched for three months. It depends on the attacker and what it is that they want from you. Now that you understand what it is that attackers are looking for when they are choosing their victims, you need to understand yourself and you need to see if you are perhaps an easy target. So, do you think you're an easy target? When you are out and about your daily life, going to the shops, driving around, be aware of be aware of the way that you move your body okay if for example you are walking in such a way where you are distracted you are looking down perhaps at a cell phone and you don't know what's going on around you then that automatically makes you an easy target because you're not going to see someone approaching you think about your body movement if your shoulders are hunched and you're walking with little nervous shuffle steps, it shows attackers that you are vulnerable. Whereas it's quite different if you're walking with your head up and you're looking around and you're moving your arms, you're swinging your arms as you walk and you're walking with confidence and you're walking with purpose, it looks like you know where you are, you are confident, you have a high self-worth and it makes your attackers think that you will fight back, which is exactly what you want. You don't want them to think you're an easy target. As you walk around, also take note. Do you look at people in the eyes 
or do you look away? If you look away, then that is showing a sign of weakness. Whereas if you are looking at people in the, in the eyes, if you're looking at people as they're walking past, you can smile, you can just look at them, you can greet them, but it shows, again, it shows that level of confidence. Now I know in certain cultures, women are not meant to look at men in the eyes, but you should. Because again, it is a sign of submission and a sign of weakness if you are not able to look at men in the eyes. You want to show them that you are a strong, independent, confident, powerful woman. Also, do you have possible weapons on you as you are walking around? Do you have a handbag? Do you have an umbrella? Do you have a briefcase? Do you have a laptop bag? All of these could be possible weapons that you can use to protect yourself. The way that you carry your handbag is also really, really important. If you carry your handbag on your shoulder like this, and someone is wanting to steal your wallet and to steal your purse, well, it's going to be really easy for them to pull that off of you. Okay? If you are clutching your bag to you like this as you walk and you're looking nervous, it's going to make people think that you have something of value inside and they're going to want it. The best way for you to carry your handbag is to have one that has a long strap and to wear it like this so it is across your body because that means that your hands are free. So if you need to get into a fight situation, you have your hands free. You don't have to worry too much about your back. Okay? It makes it really difficult for someone to pull the handbag off of you and you can use it to protect yourself. If someone's coming up to, to strike you, if they want to try and stab you, for an example, you can use the bag as a shield. Now, I mentioned earlier that if you're walking around looking at a cell phone, you are distracted and you're not able to see what's coming up around you. I want to expand a little more on situational awareness, what it is, how you can practice it, and why it is so important. Okay, so firstly, Situational awareness is just that. It is the ability to be able to pay attention to everything that is going on around you. The reason why you want to know what is going on around you is so that you can identify a potential threat and take action to remove yourself from a situation before it even happens in the first place. How do you do this? Simply by always scanning the area around you. Now, it may sound like it's hard work to be aware of what's going on around you all the time and it does take a little bit of practice but once you are used to doing it it becomes second nature and it's really really easy so I'll give you an example as you are walking into a shopping center it's a good idea to know where all of the exits are notice if there's a security guard nearby and notice who is around you as you are going into the shops and from shop to shop, just keep a little glance on who is around you all the time. And if you are going into multiple shops, that will allow you to see if someone is perhaps following you. The same goes for if you are driving your car. Notice what cars are behind you and who is around you. So many people get hijacked when they, they come to a stop at a robot and it stops street and they say the guys came out of nowhere they just appeared well no one just appears they would only just appear because you were not paying attention and you didn't see them coming so when you are stuck in traffic you're sitting at a robot instead of sitting on your phone texting and checking up on Facebook and those messages that you're getting leave your phone alone and constantly just keep scanning your mirrors and the area around you. And take note, if someone comes to your window and approaches you from this side, don't let them distract you because often these guys will work in pairs or in multiples. They'll use one person to distract you and they'll have other guys sneaking up on you from different angles who will jump into your car, break a window, do whatever it is that they want to do to get into your car. So always be aware of what and who is around you. Going back to the shopping centre example, you want to be aware of, 
of the people, the security and the exits in case something happens and you need to get out of there in a hurry. Being aware is a choice. You have to make the conscious choice to be aware of your surroundings. And it's quite simple. If you identify a potential threat, if you see someone, you believe that someone is following you, then you can take action to remove yourself from the situation. Instead of walking to your car alone, you can approach security and you can ask a security guard to walk with you to your car because there is power and safety in numbers. We had a, a situation where um, one of the women who attended our very first training seminar ever, she'd come to our training, done the workshop, learned all about being aware of her surroundings and she had gone to a shopping centre and drawn money. She then went and carried on with her shopping. Because she was practicing being aware, she actually noticed that there was someone following her. Literally, this was a couple of weeks after she'd done the training. She noticed that someone was following her. They were following her because they had seen her drawing money. They knew she had cash and they wanted that cash. So they followed her from shop to shop and they were waiting for her to leave to go to her car. She noticed this person. Instead of walking straight to her car alone, she went to security and she said, I think I'm being followed, can you please come with me to my car? The moment she was seen talking to the security guard, the person disappeared. So she was able to take action to stop a potential incident from happening before it happened. Okay, that is the power of being aware of your surroundings. Women are natural nurturers and because of this, we think the best and we see the best in everybody and we don't want to hurt people but you actually need to learn to put that aside so that if you are in an uncomfortable situation you then have the confidence and the ability to get out of it all right i'll give you an example you need to be able to confidently say no and mean it we find ourselves in situations with people that we know that we shouldn't be in and it's because we lack the confidence to stand up for ourselves, to be the, the bold, empowered woman that we should be and to say no with meaning. We had a, a, young, a young woman come to, to one of our seminars and her and a friend were there together and she explained to us how she had been at a golf day for work and her boss was was drunk and he started hanging all over her and kind of she was feeling really really uncomfortable her friend was a little bit away but she, she could see what was going on the one who was in the position with the boss she wasn't saying no with meaning she was giggling and she she kept trying to brush her his hands off of her and she was kind of going <laughs> no no stop it stop it so while her body was going, stop it, what was coming out of her, her, her mouth and, and her face was not saying the same thing. She was sending mixed signals. So your body language is also incredibly important because 80% of communication is non-verbal. In that kind of situation, if someone has their hands on you, they're making advances and you're feeling uncomfortable, you actually need to say it. I'm not comfortable with that or no stop it and walk away but again this girl it was her boss she was worried that if she had to stand up to him that he would get cross with her and she might lose her job don't ever be afraid of anything like that it is not worth putting yourself in that situation where you are feeling uncomfortable and you know what legally you can't fire her for that anyway. So don't be afraid to say no with confidence and meaning and to stand up for yourself. And if someone is making you feel uncomfortable, tell them and get the hell out of there. Earlier I was talking to you about the best ways to carry your bag and those reasons. So I want to do a little demo quickly on how you can react and how it's best to react if someone is to try and grab a bag from you as you are walking down the street. And to do this, I've brought in my thug, Harry. Say hi, Harry. <laughs> I just went off. 
Okay, so we're going to um, do a scenario now where Harry is going to try and grab the bag from me and I'm going to show you what it is that you need to do to defend yourself in this kind of situation. So I'm going to demonstrate, I'm going to be walking, minding my own business and Harry, I think, is going to come up from behind me and he's going to try and grab my bag. I'm going to show you how you can react. Women with long hair, particularly women who have their hair up in ponytails, are also at risk of, of being attacked from behind because the hair can be used to pull you and drag you off into a backwards kind of direction. So just like when someone's trying to grab your bag from behind, again, you need to turn around and you need to step into the fight and you need to push them back and take your attacker completely off guard. So I'm going to show you what that would look like in, in a situation. So he's grabbing me, I'm going to turn around and step into the fight and push him backwards. Obviously that was slow. In a faster scenario it would look like this. The next technique that I want to, to demonstrate to you is a chokehold from, from behind. Okay. When, when someone is choking you, obviously your first priority is to be able to breathe. Um, so many people make the mistake of trying to force someone's hands off of them, trying to use strength to overpower it. But as I mentioned earlier, women, we need to think differently and we need to be able to work with the body and what the body can and cannot do. So to demonstrate, Harry's going to come and grab me in a chokehold from behind. Now, at this point, I've only got a maximum of 10 seconds before I'm going to pass out. So my first priority is to breathe. So how do you breathe in this situation? Trying to pull his arm off of me is not going to be effective. What you actually need to do is take a look here in the corner of the elbow. It makes a V. Now what you need to do is pull the arm down as hard as you can and stick your chin 
inside that V. That way, when he applies more pressure, high pressure, I can still breathe and I can still talk to you. And now it gives me time to think about what I'm going to do next. In this case, what I'm going to do next is grab hold of his arm with one hand so that I have some level of control. Then I'm going to use my elbow to start striking him as hard as I can. And I'm going to just keep moving my feet, moving my body and striking him until I have the opportunity to get out of his grip, okay? So it's going to be kind of like this. Unfortunately, that's pretty much all I've got time for in this training today. Just to recap what we've gone through. We have gone through the three choices that you have in any situation, which is to lead, to submit or to fight. And hopefully you remember that leaving is always your best option, no matter what the scenario is. You can get out of there, get out of there, okay? We've gone through what it is that attackers look for in a victim and how an attack is never random. You're always chosen. We've gone through how you can prevent yourself from being an easy target so that you are never chosen as a victim in the first place. We've gone through situational awareness and just how important it is to be aware of your surroundings at all times and steps that you can take to start becoming more aware of what is around you. And of course we've gone through some techniques like how to react if someone tries to grab your bag, how to react if someone grabs your hair from behind and how what to do if someone grabs you in a chokehold. So I sincerely hope that you have learned something from this training and that you have found it valuable. Obviously, this training is only kind of scratching the surface of what we have to offer at Fight Like a Girl. If you are um, in corporate and you would like someone to run a corporate training for you, we are doing them virtually at the moment. Please send me an email at info at fight like a girl. .co.za. And for anyone else who is wanting to do self-defense training and you're happy to do it from home, I do have an online course that I have created that covers everything we've spoken about today and goes into a whole lot more detail. It covers day-to-day -day prevention, anti-hijacking, basic principles of self-defense and many more techniques that you can use to get out of a situation. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this training. And if you have any questions, if you want to know any more, please feel free to reach out to me at info at fightlikeagirl.co.za.